one of the um, intriguing and enduring um, aspects of Hindustani music is the association of ragas with times of the day and night. Association in the sense that it is prescribed that every raga be performed at a particular uh, during a particular duration in, in the day or in the night. Um, there are also raga and season uh, associations. Now these uh, are uh, as I said not uh, found in Carnatic music. I, I mean the ideas are there of course, they do, they both Carnatic and Hindustani spring from common sources. So, uh, the idea uh, that raga and time are associated is, is there, but it is not followed and, and it is not extensive. It is not like every raga is assigned a particular time in Carnatic music, that is it is so in Hindustani music. Um, and uh, some ragas are um, associated with some seasons. So, this as I said is a very uh, colourful aspect of this uh, tradition. Um, now, the idea that ragas are to be performed at certain times of the day or at certain seasons for optimal effect or for um, auspiciousness also is found in uh, medieval texts onwards. Mm. The raga season association was possibly an earlier association. Uh, Bhinav Gupta of the 10th century for instance quotes an earlier authority Kashyapa. He says, Raga Prenkholita should be sung in spring. So should Malava Panchama, Takka Raga Gauda Kukkubha, Bhinna Shadja, Kaishiki and Bhinna Panchama are favoured in summer and the subsequent seasons. Now, this authority that he is quoting Kashyap was probably, uh, he possibly lived in the 7th and 8th centuries. So, this idea has been there from that time. Um, but uh, perhaps the earliest to text to talk about the Raga time association, that is time during the day, was Nanyadeva, he was a king of Mithila during the 11th century. Um, when he is prescribed that uh, uh, every raga be sung at a particular um, time, you know the raga should be um, performed at certain duration, certain times of the day. What he he had in mind was that it was more auspicious to do so that and it is even linked to punya or as we call these days good karma. Um, now, this then so uh, morphed into an association that we talk about uh, the mood of the raga is best brought out when you sing or you perform it at its assigned time. Now, how is the raga time association schematized? The 24 hour day is divided into 8 prahara, um, 8 prahara of obviously 3 hours each. There are 8 prahara. hours. So, the 24 hour cycle is uh, divided into 8 praharas each of 3 hours and um, every raga is assigned a particular prahara. You have 4 praharas in the morning during the day and 4 in the night. Now, what is day? Uh, day is uh, every the day begins with sunrise. So, the first prahara of the day is from sunrise to 3 hours after sunrise and uh, the first prahara of the night is after sunset. The, the concept of prahara is general, it is not specific to music, it is used in uh, other uh, disciplines also like astrology. Um, so, as I said every raga is assigned a particular prahara and for instance ragyaman we say that it, it it has to be performed at the first prahara of the night, rat ka pratham prahar or din ka you know dvitiya prahar whatever this is how we, we, we talk about the raga time association.
So now though um, you know this idea has been there for many centuries that raga, every raga is optimally performed at a particular time. Mm, I, there was no um, attempt to, to give a, a rationale for it. Why, why, why is it that you know, Rag Bhairav should be sung uh, at uh, dawn or uh, Puriya Dhanashri should be done, sung at dusk or Rag Malkam should be sung uh, at midnight. There was no, it was just prescriptions of individual ragas and uh, the per first person who tried to make sense of it really was uh, Pandit uh, Vishnu Narayan Bhat Kande. Um, he, uh, Vishnu Narayan Bhat Kande was uh, what, what we call a Yuga Purush. You know, he shaped the, uh, his work shaped Hindustani music of the 20th century. His and a uh, couple other uh, great uh, uh, visionaries. Now, for Bhatkande, uh, one of the Raga time association was one of the very important distinctions between Carnatic and Hindustani music, and so he emphasized it. Um, see, that was also the time when, Hindu, when classical music, as such, was being defined and given shape to, um, yeah, as as India moved into modernity. Um, so he was trying to uh, list out the differences between Carnatic and Hindustani music and this was one of the uh, few that though you know the idea of raga time association is also there in Carnatic music, it is not unknown but it is not, it is not extensive and it is not really practiced. But we do not bother about it in Carnatic music uh, though we may say like a raga like Bilahari is uh, a morning raga, but no, that doesn't stop us from performing it, performing it, it, it at night. There is definitely, even today, uh, nobody would perform Bhairav in the night. It's just not done, um, except by uh, you know rebels, of which we don't have many at least. I do not know of anybody who, who performs Bhairav in the night or Yaman in the morning. It, that does not happen. So Bhatkandi suggested uh, he, he, uh, that ragas can be divided into three categories depending on the uh, swaras that occur in them. That is he was say he practically he basically argued or suggested that why a raga uh, gets assigned has been assigned a particular time of the day or night is because of the tonal content. When ragas have uh, komal re and komal dha, so that this is a standard uh, notation to indicate that it is komal, this line underneath. This is part of Bhatkandi's notation system in fact. So when you have ragas which have komal re and komal dha and shuddhama, and Shuddhama, hmm? then these are uh, ragas that are to be sung at daybreak. These are typically ragas that are sung during the daybreak. Whereas if you have Komal Re, Komal Dha, and Mativra, again this is uh, the notation for the augmented Ma and Bhatkandi system. This these ragas are sung at dusk when the sun sets. So you have first category of ragas with just komal re and komal dha. Hmm? Um, and the second category of ragas, komal re and komal dha or are daybreak or sunset depending on the ma. Then the next set of ragas will have Shuddha Re and Shuddha Dha. Then the ragas that come after this will have Komal Ga and Komal Ni. So he suggested that suppose we start in the evening, right, during sunset, we have Re Dha, Komal and Ma Tevra. Okay, this is the sunset ragas which move to 
read her with Maa Thivra again. Uh, read her, Shuddha and Maa Thivra. Maa Thivra continues and this is the early night ragas. And then it slowly moves to Gani uh, Komal with Maa Shuddha and that become the Shuddha, the, when the Madhyam becomes Shuddha, it, it indicates that you know the day is, that the night is coming to a close and we are heading towards the morning because morning ragas according to his analysis have, are mostly they have the Shuddha Madhyam and evening night ragas have mostly Tevra Madhyam. Um, and then this continues and you have Redha, Komal and Ma Shuddha and it becomes, this is late night and this becomes early morning. And the same cycle, then this progresses to Shuddha Re and Shuddha Dha and Shuddha Ma when you have late morning ragas. And then you have Komalga and Ni and Shuddhama, which is the even later morning ragas. And then you go into afternoon ragas. And so this was um, his, what should I say, an empirical study of the ragas and an empirical a suggestion uh, based on, um, an it, it is an empirical suggestion. He looked at the ragas, he looked at the swaras. And uh, he saw these patterns, and you know the time, the, the 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 time that was prescribed for them, and he discerned this um, pattern. Mm. So we have uh, uh, Samay Chakra. This is also an interesting concept. It's a circular. It's 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 a circular schema. No? We have a circle basically divided into sectors and each sector standing for one prahara and uh, the ragas are assigned, that are assigned to that prahara are uh, written in that sector. Now what I have for you is a slightly modified raga samay chakra because uh, it is not exactly the three hour duration. Now um, this madhyam as I said, ma is, uh, is an important uh, indicator of what time the uh, raga uh, is possibly assigned to. So, Shuddha Madhyam as is, he are normally ragas, ragas with Shuddha Madhyam are normally performed in the day and ragas with the Tevra Madhyam are normally performed during the night, dusk onwards. So, the Madhyam is called Adhva Darshaka. Adhva Darshaka means it shows, it, it indicates So, whether the Madhyam is Shuddha or Tevra, depending on that, uh, you have an idea what time the Raga is likely to be assigned. So, as you see, this is a pretty elaborate uh, idea, this Raga time association. It is taken very seriously. So, as for Raga season association, every Raga is not assigned a particular season. It is not recommended that, uh, that recommendation does not uh, hold for every Raga, but for a few, very few really. So, the Malhar kind of, Malhar family of Ragas is associated with the monsoon, rains. Even Ragdesh to some extent is associated with monsoon. Um, we have, ra and then we have spring, basant and bahar. These are two ragas that are associated with spring. So these are really very few uh, ragas that are so that have a seasonal association, which is really a um, what should I say a, a petering down of this at a, at a particular time in the history of this music, every raga almost seemed to have had a seasonal association. But today what we do have left is association of some ragas with the monsoon and with 
uh, spring. Now, you see what Bhatkande's uh, observations and uh, suggestion of of uh, the the link between the tonal material, the kind of swaras that a raga has, and the time it is assigned to. The many of them are valid, but there are many anomalies too. There are many exceptions too, um, and uh, there have been experiments. I mean, uh, how? What is the nature of this association? Why is it that we want yaman should be performed only in the uh, first part of the night? Is there any objective? Uh, can it hold objectively, or is it? cultural conditioning. There have been experiments um, conducted on uh, listeners, lay listeners and uh, I do not think that there has been no conclusive evidence that Rag Yaman suggests first part of the night and Vrindavani Saran suggests afternoon. So these are the time times associated with these ragas or, or uh, Bhatiyar uh, suggests just pre-dawn it is very hard to um, vindicate these associations in this manner. So, um, it seems quite, uh, quite likely and it seems reasonable to say that this is just a matter of cultural conditioning. Hmm? Um, so, raga time association uh, is, is not only not objectively, uh, what should I say, justifiable. There is, it, it is, it is not that, there is nothing to say that it has to be sung uh, at, um, if, if there is nothing to say that a, a particular raga has to be sung at a particular time, apart from the just convention that that is how it should be. And uh, plus it also causes a lot of inconvenience, you know, because most concerts are held in the evenings and uh, so a large number of ragas are not heard uh, or some ragas are heard much more than other ragas. But you know, we, Hindus, the world of Hindustani music is, uh, finds its, finds uh, ways and methods to uh, work around this. So, the consideration of time is not very uh, strict. So, if you have a concert say from 6 to 9, you may even hear Malkons in it, though Malkons is uh, supposed to be sung around 12 o'clock. The only thing is, you will not hear Malkons before Yaman, because Yaman is, is a rag that is supposed to come the first part of the night, Malkons is sometime the third part of the night. So, you may hear a raga Yaman followed by maybe Jai Jai and then you will have Malkons. So, this kind of loosening of uh, the the raga samay raga time uh, expectation is there we it's not very stringently followed but it is not been um, completely set aside you won't find a morning raga sung in the evening for instance and the vice versa um, so in fact uh, in the last century we had Many, we had a few musicians who questioned um, much about uh, the aesthetics of um, Khayal, especially you had musicians, I am talking about musicians like Kishori Amunkar and uh, Pandit Kumar Gandharva or uh, Pandit Jasraj also. They had, they, they struck very bold new paths, but even they did not question the Raga time association. They respected it, they maintained it. So, as I said, it is cultural conditioning, but we need not dismiss it just because it is just con cultural conditioning. All music for that matter is cultural conditioning, right? Uh, if I like this music more than other music, it is because of a certain conditioning. So, this raga time, raga season association is just one of those quirky aspects of this world which um, brings colour and a certain intrigue and mystique to it. 
and it is not going away uh, anytime soon.